Hey, I'm Kevin Ergel. I'm one of the medicine residents here at Shands. I'm going to teach you about pericardial effusions and pericardial synthesis in the setting of pericardial tamponade or large effusions with hypotension in the setting of trauma. So in order to do this, we use our ultrasound. We're going to talk about ultrasound guided pericardial synthesis. So we use our cardiac ultrasound and then we'll have a needle. In this case, I'm going to show you one with an angiocath attached to it. Often you can use the angiocath that comes with a central line kit for this. So there are two different views we can use. You can either go with a subcostal view or you can go with an apical view. For the apical view, you can often have the patient lie on their left side or roll them onto their left side. In general, you want to pick the view that gives you the most amount of fluid and the most amount of fluid closest to the skin because that's when it's going to be easiest to stick the needle in. So using your ultrasound, I'm going to show you the subcostal view. You want to identify the structures with the ultrasound and then you'll use your needle to go into the skin and similar to the central line, you'll use the ultrasound to find the needle going into the pericardial effusion. Once you're into the pericardial effusion, you'll aspirate back on the plunger. Once you have fluid, you can actually thread the catheter in. That way the needle's not sticking in and you're not gonna puncture the heart. And then you'll pull out the fluid. Oftentimes, just five to 10 cc's of fluid can be enough to reduce the tamp tamponade physiology. Again, if you're gonna go for an apical approach, you can roll the patient onto their side in order to get the fluid to settle towards the apex of the heart.